G'day, I'm Andrew. This is a short video about intraosseous access, in particular using the Easy IO drill system. Intraosseous access is indicated when you need fast and reliable vascular access, and intravenous cannulation would be difficult, time consuming, or just not possible. You can use IO in both conscious and unconscious patients. Contraindications and precautions are all pretty obvious. Don't insert intraosseous needles into broken bones through infected skin or in the same limb as a previous IO attempt. Also don't use IO on patients with osteogenesis imperfecta or brittle bones disease. Ensure correct placement, avoid growth plates in children and try not to fill your patient's bones up with bubbles. There are three insertion sites for intraosseous needles. Two that are quick and easy to locate and one that takes a bit of work but does have some advantages. The two easy sites are the proximal and distal tibia. For the proximal tibia, locate the tibial tuberosity and move a couple of centimetres medially. Your insertion site is just above this point in adults or a little bit below it in children. For the distal tibia, locate the medial malleolus, the inner ankle, and just move up a couple of centimetres up the leg. The difficult site is the proximal humerus, right in the bulk of the greater tubercle. You might have to dig a bit to find it because it's overlaid by the deltoid, but it is closer to the heart and drugs administered here will circulate more quickly than those administered into the lower limb. There are three sizes of needles for children, adults and larger patients. Each needle has one or more black bands around its shaft. I'll talk more about those later. The needle itself has two parts, an inner sharp that drills into the bone and is then removed, and an outer sheath that remains inside the patient and provides a hollow lumen. The drill handset is light, comfortable to hold, and has just one button. A gentle squeeze on the trigger drives the spindle, and it does have quite a bit of torque. Finally, there's a bit of tubing with lure lock connectors at both ends. First of all, you need to identify your landmark. So this is the, uh, say for example, the right shin of my patient. From the patella, you'll be able to feel this soft, squishy bit where the patella tendon is. Come down until you feel that firm lump, and that's right there. Come in two finger breadths medially, so inside the patient's leg, and then one finger length superiorly, and you'll end up with a spot about here where we need to insert the IO. We would obviously give that a swab, make sure it's nice and clean, and make sure we've got all our equipment prepared. We can then take the drill and insert the needle on. That connects just with a little magnetic click. You can take the cover off the needle, so it sharps out everyone, make sure you're safe. Now, I'm not going to go for the site we've chosen, simply because a lot of other people have already been there and it's made a bit of a mess, so I'm going to say choose somewhere down here. You need to locate the needle 90 degrees to the skin and you can actually push it straight through until you feel bone resistance. You need to make sure that you've got 5 millimetres of needle between the skin and the hub. The black lines will help you identify that. If you can't see any black lines, you're in too far. There's not enough length to go into the bone. You need to pull out and choose a bigger needle. But this is looking good so far, so I'm basically ready to pull the trigger, push firmly, listen for a change in tone, and stop drilling when I hear that change in tone. So let's go. You can hear the change in tone there, all done. Happy to pull that out. Then you can unscrew the needle, leave the cannula in situ. That goes in a sharps container, so sharps are now clear, guys and we've got our intraosseous access. I'm just going to interrupt myself here to make a couple of important points and they are that once you've put this thing in you need to provide pain relief if your patient's conscious and you need to provide a good flush. Now you might think that these hurt when you're actually drilling into the bone but apparently not. What does hurt however is if you start ramming fluid through there that creates pressure inside the bone and apparently that's pretty uncomfortable. So go with a little bit of pain relief for a conscious patient 
In Ambulance Victoria, we use 1% lignocaine, and it's half a milligram per kilogram of the patient's weight. But you can look up your local guidelines. After you've done that, or indeed if your patient is not conscious, you can just go straight ahead, attach a needle with some normal saline, and push through a good flush dose. You will feel a bit of resistance, but it actually becomes easier the more you push. And essentially what you're doing is reducing the viscosity inside the bone so that any future use, uh, the IV will flow quite well. In a human patient, you'd probably want to go for about 10 mil at the least, maybe even up to 20. So once again, pain relief if your patient's conscious, 1% lignocaine and a good decent flush before you connect whatever tubing you're going to connect to this and start using it. Next you take the uh, take the tube that comes with the system or if you've lost it for whatever reason you can just use a standard giving set. Screw that firm firmly on there um, it will have been primed of course and the important thing is to secure this line to the leg so we don't want this to come out. The, the main thing we want to do is make sure this is absolutely secure. The best technique I found for securing the tubing is actually to use a techoderm folded over itself like this. Essentially that gives you a nice bridge between the tubing and the patient and the fact that it's not actually connected to the patient means that there's a little bit of give, a little bit of play. So if the tubing moves for whatever reason it tends to be picked up by that techoderm and it's not translated through to any pressure on the IO itself. Importantly, there's no vertical pressure pulling the I.O. directly out. So there's all the basics of setting up and using I.O. access. A couple of quick tips before I go. If you're at a big trauma or maybe a cardiac arrest, remember that there could be seat belts, straps or equipment dragged across the patient at any time. So it might be an idea to take down a couple of rolled up bandages on either side of the I.O. port to make sure that it can't get knocked out. Also, if you're going to hang a bag of fluid, it's a good idea to use one of these pressure bags to put pressure on the bag and keep the fluid flowing. Pump that up to 300 millimetres of mercury and that'll keep things flowing for you. If you've got any questions, stick them in the forum and I'll try and answer them soon.